award-winning cartoonist Mark Parisi. He joins us via Skype. Hi, Mark. How you doing? Hi. Good, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Mark is well known for his award-winning comic, Off the Mark, which has been published since 1987. Mark, you've been doing this for quite some time, so I wanted to chat with you a little bit about your cartoon, Off the Mark, today. Uh, and then, of course, your new book series with HarperCollins, Marty Pants. Yes, so I'm ready. All right, let's get started. So let's start off with your new book series, Marty Pants. Um, it's going to be a three series piece. The first two books have been published. The first one, Do Not Open, and the second one recently just came out, Keep Your Paws Off. So let's start off with a little bit. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about the series, uh, how it came to be? Uh, Do Not Open, right here. Uh, Mar the first Marty Pants book. Um, first came about when I got an email from um, Dave Linker, an editor at HarperCollins, who had seen my Off the Mark um, cartoon and asked if I was interested in writing this type of um, hybrid book, which is uh, basically alternates uh, storytelling between uh, text and um, graphics. Oh, do you want to hold and it up a little bit? You're holding oh, it I'm up. Oh, I'm sorry. How's that? Yeah, good, there we go. Good, good text and graphics. Like that, like that. And uh, basically it's for um, eight to 12 year olds, um, what they call reluctant readers. Um, a lot of times boys who don't make the transition from chapter books, I mean from picture books into chapter books. So it's a fun, funny type of read. And um, Marty Pants is basically a school kid whose imagination kind of runs away from him. So I guess it's kind of a combination between maybe um, like the Whippy Kid style book with a little bit of X-Files in there. And you don't know what is real and what isn't sometimes. What a fun concept and what a fun idea. Also with the idea of kind of encouraging kids to help them along and help them get transition along in their reading. Did you have an interest in writing or did this just kind hmm. of come to be? Well, I never, I never really wanted to write a chapter book just because there were so many words. That seemed like a, a lot to do. And same with a graphic novel. That seemed like so much drawing and so much planning. But when I first saw, I guess, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, that looked like a fun book to, to do. So that, that kind of um, piqued my interest in writing. And the, the timing of the... Um, text with the uh, graphics was kind of the way that I wrote my off the mark cartoons, which would be text, and then you look at the graphic, and that would be where the where the joke was. So for me, this type of writing kind of kind of clicked. I mean, that's pretty cool. I was going to ask you, what what's it like for you to be able to develop a character for a lot longer? Because we see in your cartoons usually have a character and maybe they will appear a little bit later on but yeah. for this you take a character and you don't just see it once you have to develop it a little bit farther along throughout the course of three books uh what was that like for you to be able to give them a little bit more depth and, and, and build a story around them was it exciting was it weird was it scary was it all the above <laughs> uh, i guess all of the above that, that's a great question because with off the mark it's basically one frozen moment in time, there is no story arc, there is no character development. So that was an entirely new thing for me to try to uh, tackle. And I, was, I wasn't sure if I could do it because I wasn't sure I understood characters and how to make a character that people would be interested in. So um, I kind of did what I think a lot of writers do or some like Saturday Night li uh, Live actors do, which is basically take a personality quirk that maybe one person had one time that you met and just build something around that. So instead of starting from scratch, trying to start from someone that, something that you know exists in, in somebody's mind somewhere and um, see, and it, it, was, it was difficult and um, um, I was very happy that, that I could do it. I wasn't sure I could do it until I tried. And my editor was great as far as kind of guiding me. It's always nice to have a good support team with you. And you do have a good support team. It's my understanding that um, you have some family that supported you along the way throughout your career as well, right? Oh, yes, yes, um, definitely. That's always any support you can get when you're 
um, in this line of work is, is welcome. <laughs> That's good. So talk to us a little bit of, about the, the two books you recently just released. You talked to us a little bit about Do Not Open, which came out in right. May. And then the second book, Keep Your Paws Off, just came out this month. And you're also going to be appear appearing at an unlikely story coming up this weekend. What's it like for you to be able to, to talk to people and to be able to sign books uh, and to be able to release these novels in a series? It's um, it's a lot of fun. I um, yeah, I'm going to um, an unlikely story, which will be my second time. Second time there, they have a great venue for this type of thing on the second floor. It's a great bookstore, so great. that um, there'll be a PowerPoint presentation, and I'll be some, doing some easel drawing, and I'll take questions, and it's a great setting for that. And doing uh, book signing later, and to be able to talk to people and go to schools and talk, it's it's really great because most of what I do is just sitting at a table somewhere and, and drawing. So to be actually able to get feedback and to get uh, people interested in it and hear the laughs and hear, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the interest, it's, it's a lot of fun. I would like to do more of it. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. And it's nice to be able to, um, I would think that that's pretty cool to be able to get some feedback and to get some interaction. And I think it's nice to be able, since your career has spanned for a couple of decades, it must be nice to be able to reach a different generation as well. Yes, um, the, the off the mark cartoons kind of don't necessarily have a target market there. Whichever ones you think are funny, you think are funny. Maybe you don't get this one, but maybe you'll get you'll get tomorrow's. Where this one is um, definitely aimed at at a certain generation, and in a way, it helps me feel more relevant because I I wonder sometimes with my references if I'm kind of missing the because everything changes so fast, and sometimes I'm not even aware of what I don't even know, what I should know. So um, it's nice to be able to write something for a um, younger crowd and, um, you know, have it, have it um, hopefully appreciated and, uh, and do well. Um, I tried not to write it s exclusively for um, kids so that if adults read it, uh, you know, kids of any age will find something in it um, that hopefully will make it funny. I want it to be, I wanted it to be funny for me when I read it. You want it to be funny for just about anybody who, who might, maybe people have been fans of your cartoons uh, for a couple years or since the 80s, and so maybe they have a t-shirt or a mug with their favorite cartoon on it, and if they said, they're like, hey, I recognize this cartoon, maybe they could pick it up and enjoy it too, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the idea. It's, it's basically the same humor. Yeah, exactly. I think that's pretty cool. Um, let's talk a little bit about... Um, your career. I'm always interested. I just spoke to an author earlier, and I asked her if she ever writes for fun. I'm interested in you. You've been you've been doing sketch work, and you've been um, doing off the mark for quite some time. Do you ever just sit around and draw for fun, or is it strictly a job and a career at this point? It. I very seldom draw for fun anymore. I, I know some artists who do, but it's there's so much um, to do anyway in drawing that. Um, occasionally I'll draw something just to, to draw something silly, but it's n not much. It's usually with a purpose these days. <laughs> that makes sense. It's, that's fair. Um, let's talk about the Off the Mark series. Like we mentioned before, been published since 1987. That's pretty remarkable. Talk to us just a little bit about how your work has grown, evolved, and changed over that time. Uh, well, the, the drawing's gotten better. It, it certainly <laughs> evolved that way. Um, the it, with um, just the way society changes, it's it's funny how you, you have to really keep up. And I've been doing this for over 30 years, and, and 30 years a lot changes. So a lot is basically just what's happening at the time. Not that my cartoons are political or editorial, but you know they're social in a way with things that everyone is going through. So I, I look at some cartoons I've done years ago and, and they're obsolete that that technology doesn't exist anymore or no one knows what I'm talking about <laughs> so there's always kind of trying to keep up with um, with what's going on um, you, you mentioned just a, a couple minutes ago kind of your process for how you set it up but can you explain to us that again 
Do you start off with the commentary or the wording and then go to the pictures? Or do you just get an idea? Or do you start hmm. kind of doodling a character and then fill it in later? How do you how do you set up what the cartoon is going to be? It, any and all of the above. Sometimes it's a, um, if I get the idea all at once, that's great, that's so easy. There's not a lot of work involved. But most of the time, it's starting with just kind of a germ of something, whether it's a word, um, a, a phrase, uh, uh, the word unsubscribe, just how you unsubscribe from emails. And just take that and say, where can I plug this in? What, what can this apply to? And a lot of times, it's taking two elements and combining them somehow to come up with something um, new. And sometimes it takes a while to, to get there. And um, I, I usually go to a um, cafe, Barnes & Noble Cafe in Saw, I guess, and bring a notebook uh, one day a week and just sit there all day and try to combine things and think of words and draw pictures. And hopefully by the end of the day, I have enough for the week, but it's there's no guarantee. It's It's one of those things that you uh, re works really well sometimes, and other times you, it seems like the hardest thing in the world. I don't, I don't, I feel like it would be really hard to have them be good all the time. So did you ever <laughs> get to a point where you're like, oh, I just want to get up, give up? Or how did you get to a point where you're like, oh, I feel like I'm doing okay and this can be my career? Well, it's, I still put out cartoons where I go, oh, I can't wait for this day to end because, you know, the deadline comes. I had to do this cartoon. I could have done it better, but I only have so much time. But one person told me that, um, and, I, and I think this is true, uh, the longer you do it, your worst cartoons are better. So that's one of the big, like, sometimes your best cartoons are just as good as your best cartoons when you start out, but your worst cartoons are better. So the whole boat rises up a little bit just because you're not as bad. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, so I was sitting in the office and I'm scrolling through your website and I'm clicking on just looking at some of the past ones and I'm just sitting in my office giggling <laughs> looking at some of these <laughs> and our producer goes, oh, are you looking at are you looking at the cartoons? Yeah, and I'm just sitting in my chair just laughing out loud. That has to make you feel pretty good to think that you're helping bring joy to people's lives. Did you ever think about that when this is what you were doing? Uh, well, what you said just made me feel great. So, uh... <laughs> It's, uh, it's, I guess, I, I, um, I was talking to a school, and um, I can't remember what the question was, but I, I told him that I got into it more for the funny than for the art. I would rather be, if I could pick one, I would rather have my job be something that was funny than, be, than just drawing that, that, weren't, that wasn't funny. Yeah. So I'm definitely in it for for the laughs. That that's the part that I, that's the part I'm proudest of. If I can if I can do something funny that makes someone laugh, someone laugh. Do you think do you can ever consider yourself a comedian? <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> yeah. Would you ever think about um, doing that? <laughs> I don't know that I have the. Uh, I think the closest thing are these presentations yeah. that I do for Marty Pants and Off the Mark. I can show the drawings. I can have a few funny lines, and uh, then I can step off stage. And do the same performance again. <laughs> yeah, I just do, do yeah. the same thing. Um, I think that's pretty cool. And, and looking at your cartoons, it seems like you incorporate a lot of animals and you do incorporate some technology. Do you feel like that's just that's part of who you are, or do you find that people can relate to that kind of stuff the most? Uh, animals, pets, cats and dogs mostly are my probably my favorite subject to do. So that's definitely uh, part of me. And um, technology, who? who you know, doesn't love their phone or, or so that that's also part of it. But I also know that there's so much of that going on now and it's new territory. I, I, I wasn't doing cell phone cartoons in um, 1987. So it's a it's a category that I I can dig into um, without worrying about repeating myself. That's so. true. And it'll be funny to see those, you know, 20 years from now, it's right. funny to go back and look and be like, oh, ha -ha, remember those things? <laughs> that That's what I worry about, too. In, in 10 years, are they going to be all obsolete? But I guess I can't worry about that. I, I have to do what's funny today and yeah. hope it lasts. But it also 
will be nice to see, because then we have somewhat of a record of it, right? Oh, right, some kind of marker. And, oh, yeah, I remember when the world was like that. <laughs> exactly. Remind us of all how weird we were. Um, yeah, you can look back now. You can look back now at the cartoons and see how weird we were. <laughs> That's so true. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, just continuing to talk a little bit more about Off the Mark. Uh, your cartoons can be found all over the place. I read on your website, um, speaking of weird, your, your cartoons have been found on, you know, t-shirts, mugs, calendars, all over the place. And you also said on some pretty weird stuff. Have you ever, have you ever walked someplace or shown up somewhere and, and gone, wow, I recognize that. <laughs> Yes, yes, I've seen my cartoons hung up on uh, different places. There was one place in particular. Um, it was a convenience store in, uh, was it Lynn? In the name of the convenience, it, it was something like um, the convenience store, Some I can't remember the name, but it was something like Joe's Convenience or something like that. And so I did a cartoon, think, that gave me an idea about uh, we are closed, we will be open at Joe's Convenience or something something like that. And I went into that store and they had it, had it by the by the counter. I didn't say, oh, that's my cartoon, but it was it was uh, very funny to, to see that go full circle. Oh, that's, that's pretty neat. Um, talk to us about some of the, the people that you've worked with, the clientele. I mean, you've worked with, worked with and worked for a vast array of people I was reading from ranging from the U.S. military to the Dixie Chicks and everywhere in between. Talk to us just about some of the, the clientele that you've had. Uh, the Dixie Chicks came about because I was doing a uh, cartoon for Billboard magazine for a few years. And so the Dixie Chicks had seen one, and you know how they had their incidents, you know, a few years ago with um, um, the uh, radio station, Cumulus Broadcasting. You know, they weren't playing. They were being banned. So they saw my cartoon and they liked it so they asked me to do their christmas card which was fun so i did the dixie chicks christmas card the um u.s military thing came about because um and a lot of things come about because of um the website where someone might be searching cartoons and they find off the mark.com and then find me uh the u.s military thing was an anti-binge drinking campaign because i guess binge drinking is a big issue in the military, so the idea was to do funny cartoons about um, the downfall, the bad things that can happen to you if um, you're if you binge drink, and that that was fun because I could draw things that I could never draw in a family newspaper. That makes a lot of sense, <laughs> uh, and hopefully, it helps some people as well. Yes, yes. Uh, well, really looking forward to um, what comes next. I can't wait to pick up a couple of books. Um, what are you looking forward to when you go to these groups? Because not only are you speaking at an unlikely story, but you have a couple uh, other stops along the way, which we'll, yeah, which we will um, put up a link to on our website. But you have a couple other stops, and oh. you get to meet and interact with these people. What are you looking forward to chatting about? Um, well, first, I just like to see if people show up. That, <laughs> that's always great, if people show up. Um, I like to talk about um, how my childhood influenced uh, this book. Um, what, what, what books? Marty books. Pants. And, <laughs> and um, how I got, how I came about um, being an artist to begin with. So I, I talk a lot about that and I'll talk about, you know, the, the plots of the book and a little bit, uh, maybe a couple spoilers, not, not, not a lot. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today here on Go Local Live. I really do appreciate your time. If you're interested, where do you like to get your books? I usually go to Barnes & Noble, uh, sometimes um, Amazon, I think, like like everyone else. But if I go to a store, uh, it, it's usually been Barnes & Noble just be, just because it's close. But there's, there's a bookstore in Gloucester called The Bookstore, which is... Um, Good as well. So what about you? Where do you get your books? Uh, we have a couple of local bookstores that, that I like to shop at. Or the library. I'm kind of a library gal. Oh, uh, yeah? I'm kind of a library yeah. gal. Yeah, the, 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 the uh, independent bookstores are great. There, there's so many Always in the Always so good. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining me. I'd like to say thank you to Mark and all of our guests today. We're wrapping up here on the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. Kate Nagel kicks things off here in just a moment. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Molly O'Brien. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your day.